This is my blog post on the Sculptured Heads by Olin Levi Warner on the Brooklyn Historical Society. Any information that I don't give you here, if you go to the blog post, there'll be links to it. The Brooklyn Historical Society was founded in 1863 as the Long Island Historical Society. Its current headquarters was constructed in 1878 to 1881 on a design by George B. Post, who also brought us the Williamsburg Savings Bank, the old New York Times building on Park Row in Manhattan, the New York Stock Exchange, and the enormous City College of New York campus on Convent Avenue. The facade of the Brooklyn Historical Society's headquarters is in a style variously called Renaissance Revival, Romanesque Revival, or Queen Anne. It includes the terracotta heads by Olin Levi Warner. For the past 20 years, I've been compiling a database of outdoor sculptures in New York City, and this is the earliest example of figurative sculpture attached to a facade that I know of in the city. My Instagram feed shows outdoor sculptures in New York City in chronological order. It's based on that database. These terracotta heads predate by 10 or 15 years the explosion of architectural sculpture that followed the Columbian Exposition in 1893 and became known as the City Beautiful Movement. The three images on the lower part of this slide are City Beautiful monuments. All right, let's look at the heads. On the left side of the main entrance is the head of a Viking. I don't believe there's any evidence that the Vikings actually made it to Brooklyn or even Long Island. But if you're into Vikings, check out the Leif Erikson Memorial in Brooklyn, which I've given you a picture of, and there are links to websites on it in the blog post. On the right side of the entrance is an Indian. By this point, the American frontier was far enough away from New York City that Indians were being romanticized instead of demonized. See my comments on John Quincy Adam Ward's Indian Hunter in Central Park. Six of the heads by Warner are high above the sidewalk in the curved spaces between the upper row of huge arched windows that flood the building's interior with light. They're uh, right up here in these, sp in these spaces. The subjects of the heads present a fascinating survey of the historical figures that educated Americans of the late 19th century considered most important. On the Pierpont side are two sculptures. One is Benjamin Franklin, who at the time was one of America's most famous men. There are two sculptures of him in Manhattan, both of which date to around 1872, just before the Brooklyn Historical Society's headquarters was built. Also on the Pierpont Street side is Columbus, who's the subject of a number of monuments in New York City. A life-size sculpture was created in 1867 by Emma Stebbins, who sculpted Angel of the Waters in Central Park at around the same time. Two over-life-size sculptures of Columbus stand in Manhattan, both erected for the 400th anniversary of his arrival in the Americas. There's also a rather lovely bust of Columbus in the Bronx by Attilio Piccirilli, master stone carver and a sculptor in his own right of works such as the main monument and the Fireman's Memorial. On the Clinton Street side of the Brooklyn Historical Society are four more heads. This one represents Johannes Gutenberg, inventor of the printing press with movable type. There is a full-size bronze of him in Manhattan. It stands in front of a high school, so you've probably never seen it, and when I took this picture, the whole thing was under scaffolding. Another head on the Clinton Street side represents Beethoven. Central Park and Prospect Park have busts of Beethoven dating to 1884 and 1893. Both those busts were commissioned by German-American immigrants, among whom choral singing, including, of course, Beethoven, was popular. Next up is Michelangelo, representing visual arts and architecture. There are no sculptures of Michelangelo outdoors in New York City. And finally, Shakespeare. Central Park has a lovely sculpture of him by John Quincy Adams Ward, dedicated in 1872. My blog post on it includes more about Shakespeare in New York City. See also my post on Shakespearean actor Edwin Booth. So, overall, the heads on the Brooklyn Historical Society's facade represent prehistoric times in America, the Viking and the Indian, the discovery of America, Columbus, 
and a famous early American, Franklin, and then the arts and technology, Shakespeare, Michelangelo, Beethoven, Gutenberg. In my recently published book, Getting More Enjoyment from Sculpture You Love, I demonstrate a method for looking at sculptures in detail, in depth, and on your own. Learn to enjoy your favorite sculptures more and find new favorites. I want to emphasize that the book tells you not what to think about art or specific pieces of art, but how to think about it, a method for looking at it. DianeDranchyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, Central Park, and my many other obsessions. To join the free Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDranchyWriter.com. Thank you, as always, for listening.